Hello everyone, today I'd like to introduce person rare identification. What is person rare identification? It is frequently used in this scenario. For example, if we want to track a prisoner who just escaped, given the raw image sequence, we use person detection to detect the people in one image, and given the prop image, find the most similar people in the gallery. It is usually used when face recognition fails, because it is using the global feature instead of the face feature. It is less accurate than the face feature. We can hardly find any same faces for different people unless they are twins, but there are a lot of people wearing similar clothes. It happens a lot because for a face recognition system, we need at least 96 times 96 face image to get a reliable prediction, but in video surveillance system, we usually cannot get such a high resolution face. Person Real ID usually depends on clothes, figure, and accessories. The hard part is to find the same person in another camera because we have already lost sight of the person. It is used for short time forensic because if the suspect change clothes, it can hardly identify the same person. Person tracking can also rely on person real ID. If the person keeps moving, we need to find the same person among different frames. There are several classes of person tracking. First, single camera, single target is relatively easy. And we don't necessarily have to use person real ID for tracking. We can simply use common filter for tracking. Multi-targets rely more on person real ID, as person real ID is to tell different people apart. The most challenging and widely used case is multi-camera, multi-target. For example, we need to associate the same person from four different cameras. And person real ID must be used because the trajectory has been lost among multiple categories. Uh, cameras. We cannot use motion models alone anymore. From data aspect, we have original video frames, the video captured from the camera. We also have target person images. Detect all persons in the video frames, extract features for all prop and gallery images, then measure the similarity. After measuring the similarity, return the most similar ones. They are more likely to be the target person. In research, usually person detection and person real ID are two separate topics. Researchers will directly use a state-of-art person detector or human label body box. However, in real scenario, we consider person detection and person real ID as a whole. There are several steps for person real ID. First of all is to learn the robust feature of a person under different cameras, regardless of illumination and pose change. Second, learning the mapping to new domain so that the same person has shorter distance. Thirdly, sort the distance according to feature and return top K results. There are several common features of data sets for person real ID. First of all, the data sets usually measured um, is usually manual labeled or detected by state of art person detection algorithms. It's independent from person detection. Usually the data sets has training set, gallery set, and query set. Training the model based on training set and then extract feature from querying gallery and then calculate the similarity. For each query, return the top n similar images. Fourthly, in training and testing, there is no overlap of person IDs. There are several commonly used data sets for a single frame. There are COHK03, Market1501, Duke MTM Serie ID, and MSMT17. There are thousands of person IDs and hundreds of thousands of bounding boxes. And we also have sequence-based data sets, such as LPW, MARS, LV ID. Also, it provides thousands of person IDs and tens of thousands of chocolates and even millions of bounding boxes. The difference between sequence-based data set and frame-based data set is how they are labeled. Single frame data set, um, each image is labeled as one person, a person ID and sequence-based data set, each tracklet is labeled as one person ID. There are several challenges of person real identification. For example, low resolution, occlusion, angle and pose variance, and illumination change. In conclusion, it is big difference among intraclass and small difference among interclass. There are several metrics for measuring the person real ID models. First is rank K. 
it's in the retrieved list, the hit rate in top K results. For example, for this case, um, for rank one, two um, queries have been hit. So it's two divided by five, it's 40%. And for top five, there are three hits, so it's 60%. And for top 10, there are five hits for five queries, so it's 100%. And we also measure with CMC curve. It is hate rate of rank K, and then form a curve. We also have MAP. It shows the precision of all correct image rank. It measures the overall performance of free ID algorithms. For example, in these two quire, uh, queries, both of them return three true positive. But because of the rank difference, the first one, AP equals to 61.1%. The second one, AP equals to 44.3%. So if we can rank the true positive um, higher, then um, this model is better. I start my experiments with this paper, um, bag of tricks and a strong baseline for person re ID. Um, many effective training tricks appeared in person re ID papers. This paper collects and evaluates these effective tricks, and by combining these tricks, it can boost the performance. The f paper states that many works were unfairly compared with other state of art methods. Specifically, the improvements were mainly from training tricks rather than methods themselves. But tricks words understand, understated in the paper. This paper used ResNet 50 as backbone and provides us a strong baseline as a simple and effective model. So my concern is mainly for cross-domain. Even though when we visually check the bounding boxes of different data sets, they look quite similar, but actually if you visualize them, they actually have a very diverse distributions. So to solve this um, cross-domain issue, I did some experiments. If I use Market 1501 uh, for training and test on Market 1501, it can get 94% for rank one. However, if I use train, uh, Market 1501 as training and test on Duke MTMC, it only gets 31% for rank one. Same is true for Duke MTMC. If it trains on Duke at MTMC and test on market 1501. The rank one is only 47%. But if I train on Duke and test on Duke, it can get 89%. Um, but if I include both of those data sets in the training set, then testing on those two data sets can get very high um, rank one. The baseline I used is this paper, Learning Generalizable Omni-scale representations for person real ID from Zhou Kai Yang, um, and the code is from GitHub. And then I tried to use some tricks mentioned um, before um, to see if it also works on cross-domain. So I used this line um, for cross-domain, and it gets fifty percent point one, uh, fifty point one percent, and then based on that. I add color jittering as data augmentation. It gets 52.2%, so it's better. And then I use random erase, which is stated as one trick in the previous paper um, for boosting the performance. However, when I use random erase in cross domain, it's actually worse the performance. It only gets 39% for rank one. And then I also tuned the batch size and the learning rate and it can get higher when batch size equals to 64 and learning rate equals to 0 0.0015. I also did some experiments on different um, backbone, um, such as OSNet, OSNet IBN, and OSNet AIN. As you can see from the table, OSNet AIN um, can achieve um, the best performance, which is 68 0.3% for rank one. And in this experiment, I only use MSMT um, and with combine or config. Here are some different uh, difficult cases um, for the model I trained. I um, summarized them as three classes. Uh, one is um, the query and the false positive 
uh, wear very similar clothes. Uh, for those three cases, you can see that they they wear very similar clothes, but they don't. They are not the same person. And second case is that um, heavy occlusion, and the model is actually learning the background instead of the foreground. Um, the first one is it's actually learning the tree. The second one is actually learning the car, and then the third one is actually learning the stairs instead of the um, person in the front. And the third hard case um, is re-ID the wrong person. Sometimes in the query, there are multiple people, um, and we are trying to track uh, one of them, but in the uh, returned images, um, the model is actually trying to re-ID the other person. I don't consider this as wrong, because um, it's very ambiguous, um, but it's also um, a difficult case um, to tackle uh, right now. So that's uh, my introduction to person re-ID.